First thing you need to get are the Evo calipers off the Mitsubishi Evo 8 or 9. You pick them up, make sure they have the retaining clips and pins as necessary to get the new brake pads in. You need to get new crush washers for all the banjo bolts to prevent leaks. Also should make sure that the caps on the bleeder valves are still intact. For brake pads, you can get stock replacements or performance pads by Hawks. For the brake lines, on the Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX, the stock brake lines were reused. Uh, if you try to do the swap on a GST though, the difference might be there, so keep an eye out for it. The hardest part of this swap is the front knuckles can't be used off of Mitsubishi Eclipse. Um, what you have to do is go overseas and pick up the JDM knuckles off of a Gallant. Um, the only difference is the bottom really, um, but as you can see in the picture here, just the fatter bottom on it. When you get these new knuckles, you have to get new ABS sensors if you wish to keep your ABS. Um, you'll get those overseas as well. As you can see in this next pick, it's the same connector to your sensor, so connected to the car is easy. You're going to need new bolts for this swap. Um, you need to get M12 by 1.75 40mm length bolts. These bolts will hold the front calipers onto the knuckle, as you can see here. Make sure they're grade 10.9, you don't want these bolts breaking, this is what's stopping your car. For the rear, you're going to need new bolts as well. The size for that are M10, 1.5 25 millimeter length bolts. Here you can see the length in them. The coarseness is a little bit different as well as the length. I'll we'll start this swap with the rear brakes. I'm going to get the car off the ground, get the tire off of there. The bolts holding that caliper on in the rear is a 14 millimeter. Once you get those two bolts out, uh, just go and lay the caliper off to the side. Um, make sure the e-brake is not on right now. It'll allow you to get that rotor off really easily. And then go ahead and start taking off that dust shield. Um, you can't use it with the bigger rotor, so it's, it's going to be in the way. It's just tack welded on there, so just rip them off. Here you can see the huge difference between the Evo caliper, the Evo rotor, and the DSM rotor. Bring the new brake pads in. This is how you get them set up into the new caliper. Just get that little metal tab underneath of the two pins. And if you need to get these parts in, they just screw in right here. Go ahead and spin the caliper onto the brake line. Make sure you pick up any of that mess because that'll eat through the paint. Throw on the new rotor. Put the caliper back on with your new bolts. And it looks like this. You can see the space between the bolt and the rotor. You have plenty of space. When you put the wheel back on there, it um, looks a lot like that. Rears are done, pretty simple. The front calipers are a lot more difficult to install, mostly because it involves the installation of the new knuckles. And if you've never done any suspension work, it seems to be a little difficult um, working with suspensions. The first part removes getting the wheel bearing out, getting the old knuckle out. You use a 32 millimeter socket here, and with the help of a friend, a big breaker bar uh, makes this process a lot easier. You'll have one person sit inside the car and hold the brakes down, keep the car from moving, and with their breaker bar, we'll get that nut off the wheel bearing holding the axle on. They're not welded on there and it might be hard, but they do come off eventually. Once you get the rotor off, it takes two bolts to get the caliper off. Let's go on and set it to the side again. And then with a special tool you can rent from a Kragen for five bucks a day. It pulls the wheel brains out without too much problems. Hits your lugs and it pushes on the axle and eventually it pops out. You're also going to need to buy a ball joint remover. Uh, it's a big fork that goes around and with your breaker bar lets you just pop everything off. Uh, you can see there's going to be two on the bottom, two control arms, and there'll be one on the top. Once you get that, um, it's all done. There's a comparison between the rotors getting the brake pads in, the same as the rears, push the clip underneath, 
bolt up your stock lines and get your new knuckle on there and you're all done. It's a lot easier said than actually done. It took a couple hours to get this all done for me. First time messing with the car. As you can see, they're on and the car runs just fine. If you get your calipers, they don't come with the front pins. Uh, you'll need to order a set from, directly from Mitsubishi. Here are the part numbers for both the front and the rear. Here are the bolts that mount the caliper to the knuckle. Make sure you get the lock washer and the flat washer. Um, they go on the bolt as well. Some people are going to want dust shields on the cars, uh, especially if they're daily driven. Um, for the fronts, you can use the stock dust shields off the Evo. A little bit of modification, you can get it to fit onto the Eclipse. Um, here you can see they just made an extension to the center mounting location. For the rears, you can't use the stock Evo. Um, you'll have to make your own. Here is some sheet metal. Um, cut it out, just tack welded it to the car. For the wheels, make sure they have a 38 millimeter offset. These brakes are really big, and stock wheels won't work. So I just used Evo wheels, but you can go aftermarket as well. Just make sure they fit the clearance. Once you have these knuckles on your car, any of the big brake upgrades that Evo guys will use can be used on Eclipses, as shown here. If you have any more questions, please visit dsmtuners.com. Search the forums for the Evo brake swap checklist. I started by Atuka, or you could just be the tech article which gave a lot of information that helped me along this project. This was narrated by Atuka, swap completed on a 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX, aka GSX. Thank you for listening.